Welcome to Advanced Quantum Chemistry and my sixth lecture on Hartree Fock theory. The topic of this lecture is calculus of variation, and this is a preparation for the derivation of the Hartree Fock equations. The calculus of variation is finding the stationary points of a function without actually evaluating the derivatives. Let's take uh, this simple function, simple polynomial, f of x, 2 times x squared minus 4x. The normal way to find a stationary point, maximum or minimum, of, of a polynomial or for any function is to um, calculate the derivative and then find the roots of the derivative of the function. So the derivative of this uh, uh, simple polynomial is of course 4 times x minus 4 uh, and finding the root means we set it equal to 0 and as you hopefully can see that uh, we get a root for x minus x equals to 1 which means we have a stationary point for x equals to 1. So that's a normal way of doing that. But now let's try a different way. Let's, try, let's look at the Taylor expansion uh, of this function uh, f of x for an arbitrary change delta x. So we have a arbitrary step uh, away from f of x. Uh, now the normal Taylor expansion uh, of the function f of x around x is then the function of value at the point x plus the derivative evaluated at the point x times the step length, which is here the arbitrary change delta x, plus one half the second derivative times the step length squared, and so forth. Now, uh, we know, of course, that uh, we have a stationary point if the value of the first derivative of the function at this point is equal to zero. So we have a stationary point if this derivative is zero, but if this derivative is zero, then the whole term is zero independent of what the value of delta x is. So, so we have a stationary point of our function here if for all values of this arbitrary change delta x, this term here is zero. And this term, this first term in the Taylor expansion, we call, we write just delta f, and we call it first or the linear variation in f. So if that first or linear variation in f is zero, then we know that the function f of x has a stationary point at uh, the point x for here. But now let's go back to our example and let's try this. So the tail expansion, so we go, uh, we just evaluate what is the value of the function f of x if we not evaluate it x, but at x plus delta x. So wherever we have x here, we'll now insert x plus delta x. So we get here 2 times x plus delta x squared minus 4 times x plus delta x. And if we evaluate the parentheses and collect it, then we get uh, this line here. And you can see that's our original function. Uh, and this one is now our first or linear variation. And then we have high order variations. From what we learned from the uh, slide before, we know that the, our function f of x has a stationary point if the linear or first variation is equal to zero independent of the value of uh, delta x. Now let's look what was our first or linear variation. That was 4x minus 4. So we know that we have a stationary point if this is zero, and we can see this is of course zero if x is equal to 1. So we found the same stationary point as we did without ever evaluating the derivative. We haven't calculated the derivative here. We just inserted x plus delta x. So a way to find stationary points is to find what the linear variation of the function is and then uh, try to investigate or investigate when this linear variation is equal to zero. Now, in order to derive Hartree Fock theory, we said before that we have to minimize the Hartree Fock energy by varying the functions, the orbitals. Here, where we looked at what is the value of the function f, not at the point x, but at the point x plus some small change delta x. 
Now let's look at a spin orbital psi and let's look at two different quantities which are calculated uh, from uh, a spin orbital. The first one is the electron density, rho. And the electron density, after uh, the Born interpretation of the wave function, is calculated just as the norm squared of a wave function, and it's in our case here the norm squared of this spin orbital psi. Now the, the density is a function of the position r in space and the, the value of the density depends only on the value of that spin orbital at the point r. So if you want to know what is the density at one point r, you only need to know what the spin orbital, what the value of the spin orbital is at this point r. So that's a simple function. It's a function, the density is a simple function of, uh, uh, of actually the point r in space. Let's look at another uh, object or another quantity, the orbital energy. The orbital energy is um, this integral or of the Fock operator. So, and therefore it's, it's not a function, but it's what we call a functional. It's a functional because it depends not on the value of the spin orbital at what particular point in space, but it depends on the values of the spin orbitals over the whole space because it is calculated as an integral. And in general, all the expectation values which we have in uh, quantum chemistry, quantum mechanics, uh, for example, energies, they are, uh, are calculated as expectation values, meaning as integrals over some functions. All these expectation values, they mean all the energies, are functionals. So if we now want to find the minimum, which is a stationary point, the minimum of an energy uh, by varying the function in here, and that's precisely what we want to do in order to derive the Hartree-Fock equations, then we can use the generalization of this uh, uh, calculus of variations, which we've done before, to functional. It's not to function, but now to functional, and that is called functional variation. So let's, let's look here at our energy and uh, do the same kind of expansion as we did. So let's look here at the, what, is the value of, what is the value of the energy E, not from calculate from uh, the wave function phi, but a wave function which was slightly changed, where we added some delta phi. Now the energy is calculated as this expectation value, as this integral, and uh, if we expand now this integral, we get the energy calculated from the wave function phi back plus uh, two terms here where we have this small change in the wave function a in the bra or in the cat and then of course we also get a term where we have uh, both variations in there. But this one is the important here because this is again that's the linear variation and from what we have seen on the slide before for a simple function we can now generalize that and therefore know that the energy here calculated as this expectation here will we have a minimum or will be minimal uh, for the function phi if this linear variation is zero. And that's exactly the way we're going to derive the Hartree-Fock equations in the next lecture.